Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. Today I'm gonna to show you something really neat. Um, it has to do with bringing in your 3D Google Maps into Revit as a usable three-dimensional object, as well as bringing it into other programs. This workflow works for a lot of different things. So um, stay tuned, um, you're gonna get some really neat tips, go through a couple different software and understand how you can take those 3D, 3D images that you spun around in Google Maps and actually bring them into your software. Um, I call it ripping Google Maps, I'm not sure if that's the best term, but um, a pretty cool process, hope you enjoy it and uh, I'll see you there. A really short backstory, um, the reason that um, I decided to sort of figure out how to do this is um, my usage of drones and creating photogrammetry from drones led me to a project where we could not get a drone out there. And I thought, what if I use the same process to develop these 3D meshes for twin motion at the time, but also for Revit, um, um, but using Google Earth, Google Maps. And so that's what we're doing. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna jump into Google Earth and I'm gonna pick a location and I'm gonna run you through the process from start to finish, um, taking it step by step. Of course, before we jump in, make sure you subscribe to the channel here on YouTube, hit the like, hit the notification, um, and look out for more tutorials, videos, and live streams in the future. So with that, let's jump right in. So as you can see, I've got Google Maps, so just maps.google.com, and I'm actually going to choose a location that um, I know works really well. Um, it's a pretty cool building, and um, and I think it'll show the process well. So this is what you would normally see in Google Maps. Pretty straightforward. You would see your map view. I'm going to jump over to 3D satellite image, and so uh, anyone who hasn't been on Google Maps recently may notice that it actually changed a little bit. Um, it's down on the bottom left hand corner here. I'm going to switch over to satellite. I'm going to hide hide the, the panel there. And so if I hold shift and left click, you can see I can actually orbit around this building. So this is actually the building I'm gonna do here. It's a really neat, um, really neat uh, brutal building that's actually being renovated to a hotel right now. But um, I like this as a, as a test object for what we're about to do. So the first thing you wanna do is you actually wanna turn off labels. So on the bottom left, if you hit where it says maps and go to more, uh, you can uncheck labels. And that'll get rid of all those annoying labels that are telling you what it is. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna record ourselves flying around this building almost as if we were flying a drone. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but um, we're gonna use uh, different programs to, to record it. So I'm actually using OBS um, to record my screen. Um, you can really use any screen recording software. It doesn't really matter what it is. Um, and you could also just take individual pictures, but the, the process that I use is actually recording yourself spinning around the building as a video, exporting it as images, and then uploading it to uh, recap photo. So let's let, let's go through the process first. So I'm gonna hit record over on the other screen, and this is basically all I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna record myself slowly flying around the building like this. And for an, for an object and not for a site, um, you can really just do a, a one spin uh, around it a couple times like this. And then I would suggest doing a, a one or two sort of straight down looks you know, going like going around the, the project a little bit. If you want to get a little more detailed, you get a little more detailed. I'm going to press stop on the screen. The one thing that I will tell you, the tip that I will give you is don't pan like this so that you see a horizon line um, because that kind of stuff like this, that just screws with the photogrammetry. So the best you can, make sure you're looking at a similar angle, different heights, and record yourself going around the building. All right, so now let's take a look at what this video looks like after we've done recording it. All right, so as you can see, here's us spinning around. It's just exactly what you saw. It's my screen recording of me spinning around the screen. So imagine we're flying a drone around the site. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take this video and turn it into images. Here's another example of what you can do um, uh, using different software. Pretty much any movie or video editing software will get it done. I prefer Premiere just because I have it. I use it for all my video editing. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Premiere for this process. But at the end of the day, your goal is to take your video and export it as a sequence of JPEG images that you're going to use for creating a photogrammetry mesh. So I'm going to jump into uh, uh, Premiere. I'm going to click New Project. I'm going to call this IKEA building. I don't know if you guys saw, but it's right next to an IKEA. It's actually in New Haven, Connecticut for anyone who's interested. And now I'm going to throw my recording into Premiere. And so there's my recording in Premiere. I'm gonna drag this into sequence. I don't want this to be a how-to in Premiere. So uh, if you don't know Premiere and you really wanna learn it, uh, feel free to look out. Um, I'll show you the exact tools you need to do this process in Premiere. So all I did was made a new, uh, a new project, imported the video and then dragged it into my sequence. Um, you don't necessarily need to do this, but I find it to get you get better results. I'm going to double click the image. And I'm going to scale it or the video. I should say I'm going to scale it so that my 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 toolbars are gone. 
Um, so you can see I just scaled it so my toolbars are gone. So if I scroll through this, you'll see it's just me spinning around the, bit, the, the, the building. Right, that's all it is. So now I'm just gonna show you how you export that as a sequence of images. So I'm gonna right click my sequence and say export media. Then uh, for my source settings, if I pull this down, I actually have options. I have uh, JPEG options, I have um, um, animated GIF options, I have all these different options. If I go to JPEG, you can see it says JPEG sequence. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna export uh, my video as a series of images, which are JPEG format. Um, but the key here is if you did it by default, it may actually, it'll probably do one frame per second. So, um, you know, that'd be 30 frames, or sorry, 30 frames per second. So as you can imagine, that's actually going to be a ton of images. So we don't need that many images. That's going to be too many. We actually can only max out at 300 images, I believe, for, um, for the photogrammetry software. So down here, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to uncheck where it says frame rate, and I'm actually going to pull it down to five, depending on how long your image is, you may need to go down to one, but I'm gonna go to five. So now this is gonna be five images per second. It's just gonna export for me. I'm gonna click export, and there it goes. It's exporting my sequences. All right, so step one, record yourself flying around the building in Google Maps using some sort of screen recording app, uh, software. Ideally, make sure that the horizon's not gone, or not, not showing, um, and then get get a nice uh, a spin around the building and then some some uh, plan site plan type of views. Step two, bring it into a video editing software. For me, I'm using Premiere and export it as a series of images, JPEG images. So now step three, let's take a look at these images. So there we go. So if I click these, you see I have 220 images. If I open one, you can see what they look like. They're just a bunch of images going around the building. Perfect. So step three is actually to now load them into a photo grammetry software. I'm going to be using Recap Photo as my tool. Anyone who has, um, I believe it's most of the Revit subscription models of, of Autodesk software, you get Recap and Recap Photo with it. If not, you know, take a look at your subscription service, figure it out, you know, Autodesk has their thing. Um, but there are other tools out there um, that picks, picks, uh, picks 4D or something like that. There's a bunch out there that do photogrammetry. So I'm using this as my tool. Um, you guys feel free to use whatever it is. There's lots of photogrammetry software out there. I just prefer this one and I like the way it works. Plus I have it with all the subscriptions. So I'm gonna open up Recap now. This is Recap Photo, I'm sorry. And I'm going to um, click uh, uh, Create 3D and I'm gonna click an object. And this is interesting because I found, um, you notice there's aerial and object. When it comes to this process, um, I found that the object seems to work better than Arial. Arial does a lot of weird stuff when it comes to Google Map ripping, and I've tried a lot of different ways. If someone else has other 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 thoughts, uh, feel free to comment below. But I found that object seems to work the best for this particular thing. Um, you can see I have a whole bunch of rips down here that 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 we've done in the past. I'll show some examples, probably of some B-roll. Um, but I'm going to click Object. So I'm going to create a new 3D object, and then the first thing it wants you to do is once you pull down the photos. So I'm going to go to Create. Oops, I'm going to. Sorry, I'm going to click anywhere. <laughs> I'm going to go find my photos and I'm going to load all my photos in here and click open. Now, remember, if you're using Recap Photo, you do have a limit, even with subscription, of 300 maximum photos. So if you load them in, it says 500 photos on the bottom. You have to make sure you delete some. It will not let you upload them with, with more than 300 photos. So just, just let you know. I have under 300, so I'm just going to leave these as is. Um, so now that we have all our photos selected, I'm going to click Create. and this is something a little new for Recap Photo in the last uh, year or less than a year. Um, you do have to create a project and a um, in a folder or put it in a folder using the Autodesk uh, desktop app with the cloud and all this stuff. So it does do everything through the cloud, and so you need to create a project um, as well as a um, a, a cloud folder um, to put it in, um, and you need the Autodesk desktop app. So. Uh, for those of you not familiar, make sure you're looking into it. But you need to install the Autodesk Desktop app and Recap Photo to do this process. So then I'm just going to click here and I'm going to say IKEA 2 um, and I'm going to click Start. That's it. So I gave it a project name. It's already in a folder and I'm going to click Start. Um, and then it's going to upload the photos um, and then it's going to process. I will warn you that um, the uploading is actually fairly fast. Uh, the, the processing itself um, can be a little bit of a pain in the butt mainly because it goes up to the cloud and then it sits in the queue forever until Autodesk says they want to render it. But uh, I've already have one processed, so we're going to take a look at it now. So step one, record yourself looping around uh, a building in Google Maps. Step two, export as images. Step three, load it into Recap, let it do its thing. Step four is open the mesh. So I have down on the bottom here, 
I have create, uh, this is Ikea building test. And there's an option down here. Notice how this is local up here. It says my computer down here says cloud. Oh, another one of those things that Autodesk threw in there. You have to throw it to the cloud first and then pull it down local, et cetera, whatever. Uh, so I'm going to click down here where it says open mesh. All right. So there we have it. If I zoom in way over here, you'll see, I actually have a three dimensional mesh of that Google map, which is pretty cool. If you don't believe me, it's in 3d. I can show you some of the faceted edges. Check that out. Pretty cool. All right. So a couple things you need to do before you actually use this in any software. Um, the first thing I, 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 I like doing this in recap photo. You can do this in some other programs. If you, if you're more comfortable in a mesh, um, a mesh mixing environment of, of 3d max or blender or whatever you can do it in there. But I, I personally don't mind it. So I know that this building is about hundred feet wide. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna make sure I scale it. This is photogrammetry. So unless you give it control points, it's not going to know the scale, location, orientation, etc. So I'm going to go over to my little gear. There's a little, um, ruler on the left hand side for scale and units. I'm going to change it to feet because, uh, you know, that's where I am here. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to click value instead of percentage. And then there's a couple things you could do. You could actually click a, a scale percentage or it lets you click on screen. So again, I went to feet, I went to value. And now if I can click two known points, so I'm clicking here and clicking here. If I zoom in, you could probably see there's little pins. And then I could type in 100 and click set. So as long as you have a known value, if you don't know the value, um, you can also just sort of scale it off of Google Maps itself. There's a little scale on the bottom and then go with that. So now this is scaled, it's oriented pretty well, and now you're good to go. Okay, so now if you want to save this, you can save this. Now here's the next part. Now we have a mesh, we have it scaled, and now we can do whatever we want with it. If we need to cut a middle out, we could highlight it, we could edit it in here and cut it out, etc. But I'm going to bring it into Revit first. Okay, so I'm going to go under export. And then I'm gonna click export model on the left hand side. Now you can see, I actually have so under quick export, um, let me scroll out here, quick export, you have you, know, you have a few options, one, two, three D make, you have FBX, uh, blah, 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 all these things here. I prefer advanced because uh, I think you have more options here. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to bring it as an RCS. So right now we're just going to bring it in as a point cloud. Um, there's other objects if you want to mess with, but point cloud to me is the easiest one to bring into Revit. And then you could slice it and you can model from it. You can do whatever you want. And so I'm going to change this from points per meter square of 100 to points per meter square of 500. Um, you're going to have to play with how many points you want and sort of weigh the size of the file and the annoyance of using all those points versus not. Um, I'm just going to do 500 and see how it looks. I'm going to click export. So I'm going to escape, save it here. And now it's exporting a point cloud. All right. So before we jump into Revit, I just wanted to recap one more time through the process. First, we flew ourselves around in Google Maps and recorded as if we were a drone. Then we brought it into Premiere or any video editing software, exported it as an image sequence. Then we uploaded it to Recap Photo for some photogrammetry. So any photogrammetry software would work, which developed a 3D mesh. Then from that 3D mesh, we exported it as a .rcs file, which is a point file for like a laser scan point file. All right. So now let's jump into Revit and let's bring in the point cloud. So here I am in Revit. Uh, this is just a blank file. Uh, blank template. I'm in my 3D view. I'm going to go to insert point cloud. I'm going to select that RCP file and I'm going to click open. Now you'll notice this is a point cloud. If I scroll around, you can see it's a scaled point cloud. It has all the mesh. So one thing that um, I noticed uh, in a recent update of recap photo is I could not get the points to export with their RGB values from the texture. So anyone who's tried this process or maybe familiar with it, maybe someone at Autodesk, <laughs> if um, if you know how to change that setting, please comment below or shoot me an email or hit me up at Twitter um, and let me know. So what, what I mean by that is, as you can see, this is useful, right? I can I can put on a section box, right? And I can uh, let's say maybe I'm using this for existing conditions um, or maybe as a background or something like that. But right now more for existing conditions. Um, if I go over here, you can see there's there's my sort of elevation of it. Um, if I if I go like this, I'm actually you know cutting into the building. Um, maybe I you know, maybe I only cut a section of it, and now you can see I actually have the profile of the building. So there's there's still use uses of this, but it's a little hard when it's all the same color to sort of get a sense of what it is. So what I wanted to do really quickly is just show you an example of what uh, what used to happen. So let me uh, let me get rid of this point cloud. So 
what used to happen is uh, when you exported a RCS or a point cloud, um, then when you loaded it in, it also had the RGB values. So I'm going to quickly load this other example in. So now if I zoom out, you could see this one is a point cloud that actually has the R RGB, so the color values on it. Um, another thing to note, too, is if you have issues going directly to RCS, you can go to a PTS file, which is a point file, and bring it in. I tried multiple ways, and I could not, in the new version of Recap Photo, I could not actually get what you're seeing here, which if I zoom in, you could see their points. But if I zoom out, you could see you actually have the context of what you're seeing. So kind of strange, but um, maybe there's been an update that I in a different setting that I didn't see, but I have not been able to find that setting. So feel free to look at it. So. I was editing this video and uh, I couldn't post this video without trying to figure out why on earth the colored point clouds wasn't working anymore. So I dug in a little bit. I did some research. Um, still don't have the exact answer, but for anyone who goes through this tutorial and gets frustrated like me not being able to get a colored point cloud out, just wanted to show you that I figured a little bit of a solution out. So um, if we jump into this, what I've done is instead of scaling the model in, in Recap, um, I just brought the model, the mesh in, you know, downloaded it from from the cloud server. And here it is here. I didn't do any scaling. I didn't do any editing, any modifying of it. And then I just went over and I exported to a RCS file and I didn't touch any settings. I left that at 100 points per meter square and I was able to export it. And what you'll see is um, if I jump into Revit and I import that point cloud, it's coming into Revit with three dimensions with the points on there. So I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's a memory limitation, if it's a bug of the software, if it's something with modifying the actual file. And actually, um, for, for those who would actually want to scale it correctly, because remember, we didn't scale this. If you select a point cloud in Revit and you go to edit type, you can actually change the scale factor right here. So if I click 10, click OK, you'll see it scales up. And so you can you can scale it on the Revit side, which is nice. The only thing that stinks a little bit is not being able to change the points, the points per square meter. So um, couldn't stop without trying that. Um, I had to fix it. And so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and talk to you guys soon. So just real quickly to recap, no pun intended. <laughs> so we're going to start by spinning around Google Maps, recording ourselves as a video, export that video as images, upload those images to recap photo or any photogrammetry um, software, export to a point cloud and bring it into <clears throat> into Revit or whatever point cloud program you're going to be using it on. Um, there are other export options, uh, bringing into Twin Motion or Lumion, for example, as an FBX um, or, or a DAE or a Collada, whatever you name it, uh, you actually have exports uh, options for the mesh. And maybe I'll do another video on that. So if you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Um, shoot me a comment below. Uh, ask me if you want to do more like this. And uh, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I'll talk to you soon.